would like to introduce um, Christopher Grow. Christopher has been the president of Commerce Resource uh, Corporation um, since 2014. He has worked with um, as uh, corporate communications for the company since 2004 and with significant contacts within the financial communities in North America and Europe. Mr. Grove has been active in representing the company abroad. So, Christopher, I hand over the mic to you. Thank you, Connie. It's a pleasure to speak to you today. And uh, as soon as somebody puts up my presentation, uh, I will start running through it. Uh, thank you to the organizers today. It's a pleasure to speak to you all. I'm speaking about uh, our ashram rare earth element and fluoris bar deposit in Nunavik, Quebec, the best uh, uh, part of the best mining jurisdiction, arguably in North America. And uh, welcome to you all today from uh, sunny Vancouver as the uh, sun has just risen here. Uh, being seven o'clock in the morning and uh, by the way vancouver is the uh, uh greatest center of mining uh companies mineral exploration on planet earth but let me make it really clear uh, even though british columbia is my home province quebec is a superior mining jurisdiction at any rate let's get into it today uh, a few uh a few financial summary of the company but uh what is important today and uh, with the current inhabitant of the White House and him moving very fast on these issues, which are arguably more important and more in focus today after a horrific uh, summer, summer of, uh, of weather events um, in terms of uh, 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 the, the, the greening of the world, the continued transition uh, from fossil fuels over to clean energy. Uh, I'd like to note uh, President Biden's executive order 14017 based about uh, America's supply chains. And from the White House report on this from page 162, I quote, Canadian companies and persons are the only non-US entities and persons who are considered a domestic source for the purposes of the DPA. Trade in mineral-based strategic and critical minerals materials between the United States and Canada exceeds $76 billion and Canada is a global hub for mining project finance, including the risk finance that supports junior mining companies exploring for strategic and critical materials and developing the next generation of projects. Canada has substantial resource potential in existing operations and planned projects that could support U.S. needs for cobalt, tantalum, antimony, and 20 additional strategic and critical materials. And certainly high on that list would be the rare earth elements. In terms of the rare earth elements, these words of Nikola Tesla from just over a century ago have never been more true than they are today. Quote, a thousand years hence, the telephone and the motion picture camera may be obsolete, but the principle of the rotating magnetic field will remain a vital living thing for all time to come. In terms of rare earth elements right now, and this comes from Argus Media, but generally speaking, analysts are talking about forecasting a very significant uh, supply gap uh, that is just starting to develop right now. In terms of mineral exploration, uh, this is not a mystery. This is a puzzle. And all of the puzzle pieces are sitting there. And all you have to do is put them together. How many companies are in production right now? How much is being produced? What is the current increase of demand? All of these puzzle pieces are sitting there. And at this point in time, uh, this is leading all of these analysts to, to speculate that a huge supply gap will be developing over the rest of this decade. In terms of rare earth elements and uh, the, uh, the, the, the sought for goal of a vertically integrated rare earth element supply chain in North America, there are three classes of companies here and I would like to speak about them very briefly. First of all, there are the rare earth processors and I would like to note that Energy Fuels is in Utah is the first rare earth element processor in North America. You can see several other companies below them listed here that are in 
intending to be future processors of rare earth elements. And we're in contact with all of them and all of them have requested a sample from our ashram deposit. In the next category, you have rare earth element permanent magnet manufacturers. We are in contact with some of them. Some of them have requested samples from us and uh, we are looking forward to this burgeoning growth, the growth of this industry in North America principally the United States. And ultimately, uh, these permanent magnets will then find their way into the designs that are essential for uh, the defense uh, products being produced by these defense contractors at the bottom of the page. And in terms of something that uh, are not my words, but someone else has said, uh, it is of significant concern that an F-35 stays in the air due to Chinese rare earth elements. And this has been the goal of uh, industry since 2005, when China imposed uh, a global export duty on rare earth elements. And that really kick-started uh, the drive towards uh, reducing or completely eliminating China as a source of supply for these critical commodities. In terms of the rare earth elements that are crucial to the Defense Department, uh, don't for a second believe that this is either definitive or comprehensive. And certainly in terms of a well-functioning military, why would they ever tell everyone what exactly is most essential for the operation of their specific designs and products? But at any rate, you can see a listing, uh, a high-level listing of certain of the rare earth elements and their certain and their properties, and then what they are used for. I would like to uh, uh, draw attention to the four rare earth elements that are principally used to manufacture permanent magnets, and they are praseodymium, neodymium, terbium, and dysprosium. And it is estimated, although again, you know, this is just a very high level estimate that one to 10% of the US demand is for the Defense Department, but this number is disputed and there is no definitive source to reference. Overall, this market is very opaque. In terms of rare earth elements, uh, I feel compelled to point out a few things that are very fundamentally important to understand. Rare earth element mining is not intrinsically harmful or more damaging to the environment than extracting copper or nickel. Do, and please do not equate historical Chinese extractive and processing methods with what is allowed in the Western world. In terms of Canada, the Canadian National Instrument 43101 is the most stringent and demanding, and demanding mining legislation on planet Earth. We have strict criteria for water and soil quality and the environmental baseline data collection is well underway for our ASHRAM project. Overall, rare earth element mines are typically low volume, high value, smaller operations with smaller tailings facilities and less tailings. In terms of rare earth elements, breaking down this uh, commodity, which is actually 17 different elements, uh, a factor that is not as well known as it should be is that monazite, which is a mineral that hosts rare earth elements, Monocyte has become much more attractive to the world and to the industry. And this is simply because monocyte holds more of those four rare earth elements that I just mentioned that are essential for manufacturing permanent magnets. In August of 2020, the Saskatchewan Research Council announced the funding to construct the first rare earth element processor in Canada. In November of 2020, Energy Fuels in Utah announced the successful retrofitting of their white mesa mill to become the first first rare earth element processor in North America. And following that, it has been very exciting to watch the uh, ongoing developments of energy fuels as they continue to increase their business in rare earth elements. Ultimately, this leads us to the Ashram Rare Earth Element Fluorospar deposit in Nunavik, which is the largest monocyte dominant defined resource in North America. In terms of the ashram project yes it is in nunavik the top third of quebec and this is arguably the most attractive jurisdiction in north america what part of what is one of the reasons that it is so attractive is is that it is under what is called the james bay northern quebec agreement which is a modern agreement with clear mechanisms in place it arguably is the most codified uh, piece uh, uh, agreement in place for advancing a mining project
We're very happy to be in Quebec. We're very happy to have Quebec as a shareholder of Commerce Resources through a direct investment of a million dollars in 2017 by Investissement Quebec. In terms of Quebec's history in mining, I would also like to draw your attention to the Orange Stornoway Hall Road at the center of the province, which was uh, financed by the government of Quebec in 2010-2011. As well, the road historically for the Raglan mine uh, was financed by the Quebec government in 1996-1997. And those roads are approximately of a similar distance uh, to the road that we are hoping might get built in our area, which is a very active area uh, in terms of mineral exploration. Uh, the world's second largest mining company, BHP Billiton, is working in the area right now with Midland Exploration. And there's at least eight other companies active on projects in the Labrador Trough area. In terms of mineralogical and geological fundamentals, whenever you look at a rare earth element project, the first question you need to ask is what mineral is dominant? There are over 150 rare earth element minerals that can hold amounts of rare earth elements, but it's only monocyte, basnocyte, xenotime, and loperite that have ever been commercialized. Loperite doesn't exist on this slide, but it doesn't exist really anywhere outside of the Kola Peninsula in Russia, which is the source of material for the Canadian rare earth element producer, Neo Performance Materials, and their facility in Estonia. Uh, only monocyte, basnocyte, and xenotime mineralogies are amenable to producing high-grade mineral concentrates. And the host rock for over 80% of global production is a carbonatite. The ashram deposit has all of these traits along with a demonstrated ability to produce high-grade mineral concentrates at high recoveries. In terms of a slide of comparisons between us, the Ashram project and Commerce Resources and the other projects that dominate the uh, rare earth element world, uh, you can see comparisons here. And as you can notice on the fourth category here, carbonatite, carbonatite, laterite. Anyways, the Ashram compares very favorably to world producers. In actual fact, I'd like to make a specific comparison to the world's largest producer of rare earth elements, the Bayanobo deposit in uh, China, which produces approximately 45% of all of the world's supply. As you can see here, the Ashram project compares very favorably to Bayanobo in that they are both carbonatite hosted deposits with a significant fluorospar byproduct, and they are both dominant uh, with the mineral monocyte with a secondary mineral of basnocyte. The other difference I would point out at the bottom of this slide is that the ashram project has a slightly higher distribution of neodymium and praseodymium, which are the most important arguably for the manufacture of magnets. This is a geological model of the deposit. It starts at surface. It has a negligible strip ratio, and we have drilled it down to below 600 meters in depth. This is the current resource right now, which was based on 15,000 meters of drilling, which was released in 2012. Since that time, we've done an, admit, a, an additional 13,000 meters of drilling, and the new resource will be released in the pre-feasibility study in 2022. As I was mention, mentioning just a minute ago, we have a very high percentage of the magnet feed. In the middle heavy rare earth element zone, uh, essentially this indigo area here at the top of the deposit, uh, we have approximately 25% uh, of the four magnet feeds. And then the overall deposit has approximately 22% of the four magnet feeds in comparison to the only rare earth element producing mine in North America, which is Mountain Pass in California. They have approximately 16% of these same four rare earth elements. In terms of our preliminary economic assessment, which was released in 2012, this was very positive with some very exciting uh, economic indicators. This was done pre-tax as economics were done in those days. And of course, the pre-fees next year will be done post-tax. But the pre-tax NPV was $2.3 billion with a pre-tax internal rate of return of 44%.
In terms of all of the optimizations we have done since uh, 2012, these are very significant. And most notably, we have uh, uh, realized that we have essentially a free fluorospar byproduct that comes out in the magnetic separation of the flow sheet. Uh, also, the economics in 2012 were based upon what we had only produced at that time, which was a 10% rare earth element concentrate, and we now produce concentrates in the plus 40% range, and we have optimized the flow sheet. In terms of the values of the rare earth elements that we used in 2012, you can see that they have all appreciated significantly, except for the one laggard, which is dysprosium oxide. The price we used in our PEA price deck was $624 a kilo and dysprosium is down to, well, uh, just under $400 a kilo right now. And that also speaks to a design uh, change in terms of the dominant recipe for rare earth elements in that dysprosium is less important today than it was a decade ago. The average percentage of dysprosium in a magnet today is 1% as opposed to the 13% it was a decade ago, but the balance, that 12%, has been picked up by the other three rare earth elements. The most important rare earth element to our economics is neodymium, and as you can see here, it has gone from $60 a kilo to $96 uh, a kilo right now. So over 50% higher than it was in 2012. In terms of what may be most interesting to the audience today, uh, the production scenario and the uh, needs for uh, 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 construction uh, and services, uh, the on-site operations at the deposit will essentially just produce a flotation concentrate, and then this will be trucked uh, uh, on a road that does not yet exist, although we could be operational for many seasons on an ice road. And then uh, this material would be trucked to a barge facility on the east coast of the Coxoic River, where then NIAS arguably can pick it up when the uh, ice is free in Ungava Bay and then ship it down to a downstream processing facility uh, that would be somewhere along the St. Lawrence River. We have looked at 17 different sites. We have yet to choose one, although Beckencore seems like the most uh, attractive uh, spot at this point in time. I know I'm nearing the end of my presentation time, but in terms of the ashram deposit flow sheet, this is as standard as it gets in terms of processing of rare earth elements. And in terms of the magnetic separation, as you see here, we produce two concentrates, the rare earth element concentrate and the essential free fluorospar concentrate. We have already in the last year produced two commercially marketable samples, one of our rare earth element concentrate, which was produced and delivered to an industry major in March of this year. And prior to that, an upgraded acid grade fluorospar sample, which was delivered to an industry major in December of last year. In terms of the ongoing work, uh, we are uh, uh, our work is being done at uh, at Hazen Research in Golden, Colorado. Hazen Research is a uh, world leader in terms of mining R and D. In terms of ESG, we were awarded the E3 Plus Award by the uh, Quebec Mining Association in 2015 because we take these issues of environmental and social and sustainability as being very significant issues, which we must address at the outset of the project. Pictured here is the former president of the Quebec Mining Association, Frank Mariage, our environmental and sustainability manager, Marie Smith, and her husband, our project manager, Darren Smith. We do, we're very proud of the letter of intent that we have signed uh, two years ago with the two uh, Inuit corporations, the Nyumavik Land Holding Corporation and the Makovic Corporation. Finally, I would just like to wrap up by saying the Ashram Rare Earth Element and Fluorospar deposit is the most attractive type of rare earth element deposit in that it is a monocyte dominant carbonatite. We have a huge resource that is going to be better defined in the next uh, uh, economic uh, uh, report released next year. We're in a great jurisdiction, Nunavik, Quebec. We have produced high grade uh, rare earth element concentrates. We have produced commercially marketable samples of both of our rare earth element concentrate and our fluorospar and we have positive economics from 2012 that are being improved and which will be updated in the pre-feasibility study next year. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak to you today.